welcome to the 46th episode of Recluse Horror. This is a daily horror movie review podcast. Uh, with me again today is Sam. Hey. Uh, so just a little background on the project. Um, back 313 days ago, I decided I wanted to watch and review a horror movie every single day. I have done so, as I said uh, before, since April, uh, it, the last 313 days. Although only the last uh, 46 have been podcasts, uh, before that it was text reviews. So each episode I go over two movies, one of which I've watched that very night, and another that uh, I've reviewed previously in text, in which I just uh, talk about whatever impressions I have left, uh, aided of course by the text review itself. Um, so today we watched another short film. Uh, as I said, there's probably going to be a number of those. Um, and honestly, I should have saved this one for tomorrow, but I didn't realize. I was just thinking that. Were you? Yeah. Um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, we did a, a short film called Bobo from 2016. Uh, and Sam, I'm actually really curious. What did you think about this one? Uh, it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it definitely wasn't my favorite. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, really well put together. It's very well put together, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I would say this is probably in my top five of the short films that we've seen. Um, the, the one, two, three, yeah, I think it would be top five. It'd be mm, probably close. I haven't to- seen as many as you. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I like, the other ones, uh, have more of a point. Not, th- and this one has a point. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're just maybe more overt. Yeah, this one is a lot more subtle, and yeah. it it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't help that it's short and subtle. Yeah. Like, it's a harder... It's a harder sell. Yeah, it's yeah. a harder thing to do, you know? Oh, true, true, yeah. Um. So this is this one is from uh, Pakistan, so uh, that's why we should have done it tomorrow. Every Friday I watch an in- international film, and uh, I really should have saved this one for tomorrow, but uh, we are where we are, I guess. But yeah, no, this was, like I said, this is probably in my top five. I've seen uh, maybe 35, 40 of these now. I'd really like to count, actually, how many short films I've done. Um, because I keep saying some, throwing out some random number. But I think that's about right. And, uh, yeah, I would say this I have, is top I haven't five. seen that many. Yeah, you haven't I mean, seen nearly as many as I have. I've probably seen ten. Yeah, yeah, something like that. But yeah, basically, you know, just just very broadly, uh, I'm gonna say this one is about a uh, a little girl who has a uh, an imaginary friend, and uh, you know, she's in a horror movie. So yeah, that's, so that that's that's how that goes. That's how that goes. Um, there's only two actors in it. Uh, there's one one child actor. Her name is uh, Rija. Is that I don't I don't know which one was which. Yeah, Re- Rija. Her name is Rija or Rija. Rija, and uh, and then the mom, uh, her mom, is the other actor. Uh, what did you think about the acting? Uh, the acting was good. It, it was yeah. mostly from the child actor. It was. She had the hardest and, job. Uh, she was. She was pretty good, actually. Yeah, I thought so too. She definitely had the hardest job. I I thought that the that the mother, uh, the the woman playing the mother, was also very authentic. You know what I mean? She she played her role well as like you know a mom who's not like. A new mom who thinks everything's magical. She's like, you know, she she's kind of um, stressed out, but she's not like fully taking it out on her on her kid and yeah, stuff right. like that. What about uh, what about the visuals? What did you think about? Uh, the they're visuals? super good. That's that's the best thing about the movie. Yeah, or this film, short film. I, I would say that was the second, but it is very good. There's some really interesting shots in this. Uh, the location is very interesting. There's a lot of good angles. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of like shots through windows and doorways and yeah, and interesting stuff like uh-huh. that. Just kind it's of a really a neat top down shot. Uh, just a different look at, mm-hmm. at a setting that you've seen uh, like uh, so many times. Right, it's just like a porch and a and a house. Yeah. Like, and there's nothing particularly special about the house, and no. in fact, outside kind of looks shabby. Yeah, like very shabby. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, but like in a pretty authentic sort of way, I felt like um, every everything about it was really kind of good. Um, yeah, I think, I think my particular, and I was like kind of floored by this, but I think my favorite part about this was there are a couple of moments where you generally like, even though this is like a nine and a half minute movie, I want to say. You there are a couple of moments where you genuinely like get some feels stirred into that. Like 
there's some like there's like a heartwarming moment and then there's kind of a heart rending moment and you know they're not they're not like full on if you were watching like the greatest drama in the world but the fact that they were able to make me feel anything out of this with how simple it is and how short, short it, is. it is i mean just in that period of time was really impressive to me and um i i really liked it um i i really liked that too i liked i liked a mm-hmm. lot of it yeah um i really couldn't say enough good stuff about about the whole thing, except for I, I just I, I didn't really, didn't really enjoy like the, the end. Ending. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm not gonna spoil the end, but right. Uh, the idea of the end is good as well. Mm-hmm. I I didn't particularly like the execution of the uh-huh. end. Yeah. Um, it it's just a little vague. Uh huh. Um, it just uh because of the short short nature of the film. Yeah. It feels like it's kind of like left in a weird place mm-hmm. and and you don't feel like you have any sort of like you have a tiny minuscule glimpse into the story mm-hmm. and right. then and then the, and then it's over like mm-hmm. when it like faded to black for it to be over i was like well okay i guess that was over <laughs> well and you were you were a touch confused about it yeah too. a little bit confused it's not yeah it's not super confusing i just i just like like i said it was only 10 minutes so it's not like Mm-hmm. They gave you a lot of time to really grasp onto anything, right? You have to really be, you have to be really focused in to see to see that, uh, like to see where what the ending is trying to say too. Um, and if you if you miss something or if you don't pick up on something, which is actually really easy to do, it's not. They're very subtle with it. Then then you you can totally miss what this what what they were trying to say or like why or like how they got there, how they got to that yeah. end part, which there are a few moments that do, that do tie in. Um, but yeah, it's really, that would be really easy to miss. Yeah. Um, I actually, personally, I did enjoy the end, um, because I did pick up on, on those moments before, but I definitely see where it's, where they could have hammered it a little bit for like home a little bit further. Uh, I just wanted something to happen also. Yeah. And kind of, I guess like this is kind of a spoiler. Not really too much happens. At Not the really end. too much happens. Yeah. So it's I. I just expected more to happen. More, yeah. And yeah. I, I guess it was like, oh, it's over. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Even even just even more within the earlier part. Even uh-huh. if that would have happened more, and then mm-hmm. and then yeah, maybe the end faded out. That would have been fine. But it. it yeah. Not a ton. Not a ton happens in this one. No, it's definitely not the most horror-y horror movie either. I mean, it definitely the the argument is is solid that it is a horror film. Yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that very many people could make a successful argument that it wasn't a horror yeah. movie. It's just a but little it's also, heavier, you know, dramatic, and like yeah. supernatural. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a little. Um, but yeah, so, so it's not exactly, it's not exactly the horriest horror movie you know, there's no huge blood effects or anything like that, you know, uh, that, that really hammers that, that cements it into that, I guess, into that genre. Um, personally, I don't think it needed that. And I think that horror fans would like this, but yeah, that, that ending I, I is very subtle. Yeah. I don't think it needed that either. Mm-mm. I think it needed no. something personally yeah. to make me more interested in, in it more more feel like something happened like right. i spent 10 minutes and something happened you know yeah uh but yeah i didn't necessarily think it needed that uh-huh. you know just maybe a few other things or yeah just something else to happen or yeah uh, a bunch of stuff there's a bunch of possibilities but yeah yeah there are a lot of ways that it could have gone that might have improved that for a lot of people and made it made the ending a little bit more um defined i guess but uh, but but yeah, I don't know. I I I liked it honestly. Uh, I, 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 overall, I liked it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, was there any? It's just my only criticism, right? Yeah, because everything the, else is everything so else good. is solid. It's yeah. so. I mean, not even not even good. It's it's yeah, very yeah, well it's done. Very good. Yeah, very well very done. Good. All the camera work, all the acting, all the the sets, the way they frame shots, everything like. Super yeah, there's good. actually not a ton more to say about that no. because of that. That's because why everything's I was, perfect. That's there's why no, I was talking yeah. about the end because that's really the only yeah. thing I could think of and talking mm-hmm. about other than mm-hmm. just talking more about the angles, more about yeah. the lighting. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Which is all which is all good stuff. So it's like this is good. This is good. This is good. Great review. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, who would you suggest this movie to then? Um. Anybody that just wanted to watch a short film, I think mm-hmm. it's a solid short film for pretty much anybody. Yeah. Not even just horror yeah, fans. It's, yeah. It's 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 really good. Uh, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, no, pretty yeah. much anyway. It's, a, it's, a good, a, it's for sure a recommend. It's a good, yeah, it's a good drama. Even if you don't like horror stuff or you get freaked out by horror stuff, I think you'd be okay with this one. It's not overly scary. It's not unscary either. Um, there's definitely a couple of moments that are like, ugh. But, but you know. Uh, yeah, I, I would recommend this to literally anybody who would be wanting to watch any kind of short film. Um, it, I, I think there's there's no wrong wrong person for this. Not to say that everybody will like it, but I don't think anybody inherently will be like, this was terrible, unless you're awful, I guess? Maybe. But, maybe. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's it. Um, this is available on the Screamfest page. Again, that's that, um, Screamfest is that, is that horror festival, um, that really long standing horror festival, festival out of, I believe, LA. Um, and they have a ton of other, uh, short horror films on there. Uh, this one is pro almost definitely, I can't remember what else I I've reviewed that was off of there, but this is, I think my very favorite that's come off of there and they just put it up a month ago. So please check it out. It's called Bobo. It's on the Scream Fest YouTube channel. Uh, and it's from 2016, although it doesn't say that on YouTube. So uh, yeah, so that's our review. So the other movie that we wanted to talk about today is Angel's Egg from 2000, sorry, from 1985, not 2000 anything. Um, this was 1996. An... Mm, 1985 is what I have. 1985. I got 96. Let me. Is that an anime? No, that's a video game that you're looking at. Oh, there's a video game version of this? Apparently. I don't think it's the same story. It has a picture for it. That's funny. Okay, 1985. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. I want to play this video game that exists somehow. <laughs> uh, it's probably not released in America. Maybe not. But anyway, this comes from Japan. This was another Foreign Friday pick a while back. Um, and it's an anime. So if you're not into anime, I guess you can just turn this right off. Uh, and this one's a kind of a strange one as far as anime goes. It's it, Actually, if you're into artsy stuff and not anime, you should stick around because this one may appeal to you. So uh, Angel's Egg is an anime directed by uh, Mamoru Osh o Oshii, sorry, Mamoru Oshii, who is the director of um, Ghost in the Shell. And it was written by him and Yoshitaka Amano. Um, who's the animator behind such works as Vampire Hunter D and the original uh, Speed Racer anime. It follows the story of a young girl who finds a large egg and decides to hatch it. While scavenging in a mostly abandoned city, she comes across a boy who also seems interested in the egg. So, this anime is not one that's for everyone, for sure, um, and probably isn't quite firmly in the realm of horror at all, actually. I mean, there there are some some definite horror themes, but to call it horror might be overstating it, which I didn't really realize it was on a list of horror animes, you know, OVAs, so I, I tried it. Um, it's incredibly slow-paced and only contains about four minutes of dialogue in the entire 71-minute movie. It's visually quite striking, but it's hypnotically slow, at one point holding on a single shot in which the only thing moving is a fire for several minutes. Um, this is not a gateway anime, nor one for people who don't appreciate 80s OVAs and minimalistic storytelling, unless you're really into the artistic element, so. Uh, Sam, what did, what did you think about Angel's Egg? I, I actually love this movie. It's really good. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. Honestly, uh, to me, a slower pace, I, I often find those movies more appealing than ones with a, with a normal or even fast paced. Mm. I, I don't know why I'm just like, I'm just into that mode. Not that I'm like a calm person or anything, but I feel like sometimes it it does calm me I, down. Uh, I I literally almost put this on last night. Well, oh trying really? To lay, when I was laying down. That's funny. Um, I picked this. Sam had no Sam Sam had had no input no, on this one really, other than saying we could talk about that. So. Uh, I uh, the only reason I didn't is because I had. I, I guess it's been a little bit since I watched it, but not that long. Yeah. And I just wanted to put something else on, so I put another anime on from. Mm -hmm. of, from not around this time because this is eighty five, but probably like a ninety three anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to to lay down and kind of watch. Uh -huh. uh, what was that again? That I was watching. Yeah. Uh, Cyber City. Cyber City. Yeah, you're saying. Um, but uh, but yeah, I was I was so close to putting this on. Mm -hmm. Um, just because yeah, it's very calming. It's yeah, it's very pretty. I I love uh -huh. I love the animation style of yeah. this time. Yeah, me too. 
Yeah, the the mid eighties, um, just eighties in general. They have a very interesting style. They haven't quite fallen into the 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 patterns that you see these days. Where and this is not one hundred percent, but many animes look exactly the same. I feel like they have very very similar animation styles, and it's not necessarily a style that I appreciate um, all the time. Anyway, um, so there's a ton of symbolism in Angel's Egg. Uh, much of it speaking to faith and its loss, essentially. The director had recently lost his own faith prior to making this film, which clearly informs much of the movie. He has also been known to say uh, that he himself doesn't know what the movie is about, which is probably worth mentioning. Um, there are several other themes to the movie, but they tend to border on spoiler territory, so I, I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, but yeah, that's another thing. If you're into the... If, if you're somebody who... Uh, you know, came from a religious background and, um, you know, sort of fell away from that and you connect with things that that talk about that um, in a meaningful way, this is a pretty good one for that, I think. Um, the visual style is sort of neo-gothic, with grand buildings in the crumbling cityscape and barren natural scenery elsewhere. Almost all of the backgrounds are drawn entirely in shades of blue, uh, with nearly the only contrast to be found being the characters themselves. This certainly adds some gloom to the movie, but can make the movie seem a little monotonous with all of the other elements working against it, uh, as far as pacing and stuff. The characters are interesting and rather mysterious from beginning to end. Um, what did you think about the characters? Did you like them? Um, yeah, they're awesome. I, 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 I like everything about this movie. Um, yeah. Even, even like... It's it's so it's such a slow movie. It is, and I remember we watched it together. Uh huh. And uh, had like, you already seen this? No, I hadn't. hadn't no, okay. seen it. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it it's it's kind of like a lost gem in a way. Yeah. Because even during the time it was it wasn't big like Mm-mm. Ghost in the Shell was big at that time. Huge. Like I I've been watching anime since mm-hmm. since the you know the the late eighties. Mm-hmm. You know maybe. Around the time this came out, I probably had watched a little bit uh-huh. of anime just just without even really realizing what it was. Yeah. Um. Just hey, look at this weird cartoon I found. Yeah, and and the more I look back on the years, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize I was like new when I watched it. I, yeah. Weird. <laughs> uh, um. Well, it wouldn't have been new. You not were, this, you were, not this, not this movie, one, but, but just, other, just other anime. Okay. Um, yeah. Other anime. When I look back on the years, you know, because you. Mm-hmm. Not really sure uh, back then when some stuff like that came out. Oh, yeah. And when it came to the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, not this, but... But thing, but things like it. Mm-hmm, but things like yeah. it. and mm-hmm. uh, But this wasn't big. Like, it didn't come over. Like, like there's not an English dub for this. No, there's not. Even though it's, like, like no... no <laughs> it, it there's no take, dialogue. They would take two nothing. people to yeah. go in and record like five lines each and it would be done but there's not an english yeah. dub for it there's a couple of other lines from, from yeah, other know, people i think but yeah the only actual people everybody else could be nobody it could be you know um the director could do voice you know like vampire hunter d was around the same time mm-hmm. and it's yeah. a similar style move uh visually styled movie yeah uh at least animation wise yeah and you know that was really big and people know of it but yeah this one's this one's much smaller yeah and uh i kind of only re- learned about it recently Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe like a year back or whatever. Uh huh. Something like that. Um, but no, I, I I really like everything about this. This is something I would like. Mm-hmm. And even with the slow pace, I I was like on the edge of my seat watching it, and it's just yeah. like so slow moving, well, and nothing's really happening. <laughs> I think the reason why is because you have so many questions about the little, the, the very little. One thing will happen, and it and it'll give you 17 questions yeah and and like some of them maybe answered are are answered in some way or addressed and other ones you just have to fill in and decide and like it's very mysterious um in a way that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily um respond to but personally i really did even though like like i said like the main theme i would say is loss of faith and i have never had faith um i am on one side of my family i'm fourth generation you know heathen so I, I have no religious background whatsoever in any capacity, uh, which I'm, I feel personally, I feel fortunate, uh, for, uh, in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, I have, I've never had to have a crisis of faith because that's just not who I am. 
And, uh, and I still connect to this on a very personal level in different ways because there, there are other themes, but again, they're sort of spoilery themes. So yeah. Um, I think even though very little happens, your brain just works this whole time. If you're actually paying attention to this movie, you just keep picking up on little snatches and, uh, uh, of things. And then, and then you assign meaning to something and you're like, no, but that's not, that can't be it. So then you, you, you know, scrap that. It's just a very, for a movie that has so little going on, it makes your brain like interpret it as though there's a thousand things going yeah, on. Yeah, I I really like that the the director said that it kind of wasn't about anything. Yeah, that he doesn't know. Um, yeah, like he he says that it's, it was kind of like just imagery and ideas and mm-hmm. stuff that he had in his mind. Um, yeah, and and that really helps me just disconnect accept and accept it yeah. that it's. Mm-hmm. just like a concept yeah he's he's not gonna david lynch it and say oh yeah, there's meaning there's to every like, single thing uh, in this and you can figure out what's happening if yeah you, there's the no. overarching meaning throughout all the yeah all the segments of the movie it, yeah. it, he says it's just kind of like ideas he had and kind of a kind of a narrative yeah that he had and, and there, follows, is, there, there is there is yeah, yeah. if i was a narrative what yeah. kind of what you put into it though mm-hmm. is is what it means and yeah and it's actually not even that uh it's not even that abstract, really. No, it's like, not. It's, it's fairly straightforward for being so hard to interpret in some cases, or or to nail down at least. Um, personally, I can see watching this one again to see what else I pick up on because uh, I I have a feeling that I would come away with a completely different movie. And sometimes those kaleidoscope sort of movies like that, where you know whatever you happen to be looking at and however you're feeling like that's what you come away with i really i really do enjoy those movies when they're done well and i thought this one was um there are so many questions to the story as we've mentioned a thousand times and very few hard answers but it seems like one of those that the more you watch it the more you'll come away with if you're looking for an anime with a similar mood but a lot more going on i might suggest something like x1999 um if you're looking for something more strictly in the horror genre, I might go with something like uh, Wicked City or maybe Perfect Blue. Although, honestly, sadly, um, because it's been since imitated quite a bit, I think Perfect Blue has lost some of its appeal to modern audiences. Just, it's been, the story has been ripped off five times since, you know. Oh, since so then. many times. It, it, it's unfortunate because the movie is just ecstatic. Just I've been ripping off astounding. that Wicked City story. <laughs> so what's wrong, Hollywood? <laughs> You're not ready for that? Yeah. Get together. Yeah. Um, so, I was actually thinking, uh, mm-hmm. it, it reminds me a lot of, uh, mm-hmm. of like Time Masters and even more, more so, uh, uh-huh. Light Years. Or, oh, uh, yeah, Gandahar. Gandahar. Yeah. Um, it, it just the atmosphere and the, the like slow, quiet nature of, uh-huh. of the, of those films and this one. Yeah. Wicked City um, is definitely not the same mood are, wise. Yeah. And, and that, Watching, I I actually watched all those movies semi recently, and I yeah, and they're all like just very soothing movies. Um, mm-hmm. With still being really good, uh, it has more of a narr- those both have more of a narrative than yeah than Angel's Egg. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I I it's it was just like it, in yeah. my mind when I was watching yeah those that this that there's like similar I- tone they're similarly toned and. Have similar ideas. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a ton to say about this because, like, I think it's really good. Yeah, it's just very. Uh, it's very simple. Yeah, it's and it's everything's a, a spoiler. It's or, not long. It, or it has no meaning, or it has a lot of meaning and no interpretation. Like, yeah, it, it, this is something you could watch with somebody and talk. Try to talk about the interpretation of it or, as you go, or the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. as you go, or the way you see. Or, or what you might think Interpret, things yeah. might be, um, which I think is kind of what we did. There's just so many stretches yeah, without dialogue that there's the, there's a ton of stretches without dialogue, and it's kind of reminded me of like when when we watch uh, like silent films yeah. because you can discuss them as they're going on as yeah, long as they're not really a dense. Silent film, yeah, it is almost a silent film. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say either. I, I was pretty much going to wrap it up. Um, I, who would you suggest this to? Is there anybody specific? Oh, unless did you have anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, I, I, we other than talking about the director, yeah, yeah, um, who, they, who they I mentioned, yeah, yeah, but you only talked about, yeah, the, uh, just Ghost those quick things. Yeah, um, he did a bunch of other stuff. They, he did, a yeah, ton they of directed other stuff. a bunch of stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, write, written a few things. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'll, I'll do some of no, uh, mm-hmm. some gotcha man stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Ghost in the Shell. Mm-hmm. Oh, Pat, some Pat Labor. Pat, oh, Pat. Pat Labor. Pat Labor. Okay. Huh. Uh, you don't know that? No. <laughs> I'm younger than you, Sam. I wasn't in there in the trenches when you uh, had yeah. to buy... When you had to buy burned discs of un untranslated Dragon Ball Z to watch it, I'm younger. Than everybody, <laughs> uh, yeah, just a, just stuff. Uh, actually, a lot of stuff I kind of want to watch, but I'm not super familiar with. Other than that, mm. um, but uh, it was worth mentioning. Yeah, uh, you know they they've done some really good stuff, and yeah. I, I'd like to see some more of it to see yeah if how quality any of it is or all of it yeah. is. Well, and the problem with this one, too, is, like, I kind of tried to look around to see if there was any, like, light anybody licensed with this movie. It could possibly be out of copyright. I have no idea. But the only things that I was finding online seemed to be bootlegs. Um, You could probably find it somewhere, like, on YouTube or whatever. I don't know whether it would be illegal or not, because I have no idea what the rights are. Uh, oh, he wrote. Uh, he wrote uh, Jinro. The, oh, uh, Wolf okay. Brigade, yeah, which is super good. Jinro is very good. Yeah, uh, some I can Ghost see that now. Complex stuff. Yeah, as Ghost as well Shell. as yeah. the original Ghost in the Shell. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they, they, that's they, that's they all the director, right? Yeah, that's yeah. the director. Yeah. The stuff he wrote. Yeah, Mamori Oshi. Oshi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very very good. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Super great stuff there. I just wish there was a place where I could be like, I want to give them my money. Please take my money. Uh, yeah. I don't. I I didn't see too much new stuff. Yeah. Um. They did. They did most of the writing for the, some of the. They did a lot of writing and a lot of directing. So. Mhm. Yeah. Uh, it looks like they're directing like live action films now. Oh really? The the uh, Amano the I mean, the animator. The person who animated this is doing that. Uh, I don't know how how much they an they're the director. Oh, Oshii is yeah, now. Oshii. That's what he's doing now. Okay. Uh, um, let me see. Directing something, uh, miniseries last year. Sand Whale and Me. And then uh, Nowhere Girl from 2015. Hmm. I feel like I might have heard of that. It's obviously yeah. it's a Japanese movie. Yeah. I think I might have heard of it though. Huh. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's transitioning. Okay, I thought you meant the the animator no, did. I'm no, like, no. why would you move from animation into live action? I mean, you could, but why? Uh, especially with you know an animator as good as that. I know that style isn't really in 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 vogue these days for anime, but it's it's really very good. It's it's good. It kind of reminds me of Angel Sanctuary, but in a a less clean way. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, but th- going back to saying how how kind of like lost this is you know like kind of a lost, lost movie, movie in a way uh-huh like there's info on imdb but there's no i don't think oh no there's user reviews is there user reviews yeah okay. user reviews. i was thinking there wasn't but yeah. yeah there is are they how are the reviews on it i don't even want to look at them i just seen yeah they had on it. they're I mean, wrong whatever it is they're probably but, wrong but yeah it's it's kind of a yeah it's kind of a weird movie like you're saying mm-hmm. i don't know yeah about the copyright either, like yeah. And I looked at it. I looked at it briefly today, and I looked at it briefly. Um, I at know the time. at the time, yeah, when I was doing my review to see what the uh, what the right situation was. That stuff is hard to find information on anyway, unless you have like a fucking lawyer. And even then, it can be hard to track down. But uh, but I I know of no official releases. Um, it's probably been on a VHS at some point somewhere, but I really honestly couldn't say. Um. Like I said, you can probably find it. I know you can find bootleg DVDs. You can probably find it on YouTube or someplace like that. So, and I would I would suggest it checking it out. If somebody does a- actually know where, uh, you know, a copy of this can be bought from the real people who made it, please, you know, let me know. I have a feeling I'm never gonna get that email though. Uh, yeah, you won't. Um, but but let let me finish up a little. Uh, it's uh, I I actually like like love this movie i know you do um but like if i had to recommend it to somebody i would have to be like well yeah it's kind of not a movie it is kind of <laughs> not a movie it is like i think it's like amazing but mm-hmm. it's kind of not a movie if you're like yo we're all geared up to watch a horror movie <laughs> or even a movie even a movie that has even an anime that has 
something to do with something. Yeah. I'd be like, well, maybe <laughs> we should watch something else. <laughs> um, yeah. Or, and, but if people are like, yeah, I'm just kind of tired. I kind of want to like chill out or something. Yeah. I'd be like, I got, I got the perfect movie. thing. I got a movie. Yeah. Let's put it on. Yeah. It's sad. There's sad parts. Uh, it is it is sad, actually. There are some sad parts. Um you know, but again, like any movie that can that can make me feel emotions, like like good good ones and bad ones. Like oh I don't know, I like it. It's bittersweet. Um I feel like exercising like being sad for, because of a movie exercises my 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 frequent impulse to just be sad all the time for no reason and directed at myself or, you know, whatever, not necessarily directed at myself, but just from within myself and, and giving it a place to go. That's like healthy or external, I guess, is just a better way to go. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, uh, that's pretty much all that we have to say. We should really wrap this up because I think my roommate's about to start laundry. So yep, there it goes. Yeah, uh, that's our review of Angel's Egg from 1985. If you liked this uh, podcast, please, um, you know, share it with somebody that you love. Also, rate, review, sub- subscribe, all of that stuff on whatever site you found us. Um, if you found us on a platform that you don't enjoy or you want to share it with somebody who does not have the platform that you do, we are available on YouTube, Player FM, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Podcast Addict, and pretty much any podcatcher out there. You can reach out to us on social media at recluseshorror at gmail.com. You can email me. And we are on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, I think there might be a couple others, and I never remember them. So I, they are definitely not active. So, uh, yeah. Did you have anything else that you wanted to say, Taylor? No. Did you have a rating for Angel's Egg or? A million eggs. A million eggs. Yeah. That seems a little a little uninventive. A million eggs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I rate it 46 shades of blue. Yeah, mine was better. Nah. Eggs are better than blue. Nah, blue's better. Blue's not in the title. Okay, we'll say goodbye, Samuel. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>